Hello and welcome to another Hades tutorial. In this video we're going to be learning how to make a signature like this. Um, it's pretty cool, it's a symmetrical type of feel to it and uh, it's actually pretty easy to do. And um, I hope you enjoy it. And remember, if you do like the video guys, do subscribe and uh, share it with your friends too. As, uh, it helps me and you, as well you get to see my new upcoming videos in the future. So let's get to it. So we'll make a new document, and which is a width of 500 and a height of 200. And we make a background black. And when you have that done, then we're going to open up our render that we're going to use. I'm going to use this one here because it's nice and um, symmetrical and it'll fit in nicely for what we're going to be doing. So place it in then. And I leave all these resources if you want to follow this along as well on the YouTube. Uh, but we'll duplicate anyway our render and we'll hide the bottom one. And then we'll start sizing our, our top layer. Then to position it where you want it to be. It looks okay there. Um, just just a little speck I'm gonna erase off. There. Now we're gonna bring in a background. So we'll open up our background and we place it in. And move around then. I'll drag it underneath your uh, render layer first anyway. And we move around until you're happy enough. Oh. Just gonna size it down a little bit. Now, make sure you wouldn't need your rulers out for this, and you're going to need the rulers to be uh, on percent. So if, if it's on if it's on pixels, um, change it to percent. You can do that by right clicking the ruler. To get your rulers up as well, you can go and um, window and or view. Sorry, rulers. Just make sure that that's ticked there, and then the, the rulers will come up. But then we go over here to the left hand pane, and we'll drag this across to 50%. Uh, my render is actually in the wrong place. There's that right there. And I'm going to drag this over a little bit as well. Just to make sure everything looks okay. And it's centered. And you can get rid of that now. I don't know if I'm bring it back for a second. I'm not finished with it. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our rectangular marquee to it. And we're going to click outside here. On your um, background layer. And we're just going to select it all until it um, comes to the center. So you have 50% of the background um, covered. And then we're just going to press and hold control and then press C and then press V. So it will duplicate that section we, we just highlighted. And we get, I'm clicking the move tool then. And we click on show transform controls. And this box will come up. So we want to grab the left hand side of it or whatever I am. If you're copying this side, you'd be grabbing the outside over here. But we just flip it across like that there, so it's symmetrical. And um, click OK. And get rid of this line now. Just like that, see? It's just bits of the um, same both sides. And now we're going to bring in our render. I'm going to use this one here first. And too big, but I'm, I'm going to duplicate it and hide the bottom one. And I'm going to size this one down a bit. There looks okay. And looks alright there. And duplicate this now again. Um, we go to a bottom one now and we take show transform controls and rotate it. Looks okay there. I'm gonna place it here, but I don't want this little bit here, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'll rest it off. Yeah, we're going to use this once more time. So I'm going to duplicate it and bring it down. It looks alright there. Um, now we're going to add one more um, C4D, this one here. Uh, place that in and bring, drag it down to the very bottom under all your C4Ds, just above the background layer. And size it down a little bit. Okay. 
wrong, sorry there. Put it down a wee bit, yeah. And when you have that done, and you're happy enough with your C4Ds, you're going to click on your bottom C4D, and then your top C4D, like that. And then we're just going to duplicate it. And I'm going to hide all the bottom ones we had. Just keep them as a backup. Now, with, your, with all them selected, you're going to right click them, the new ones, and you're going to go merge layers. And it'll merge all your C4Ds into the one layer, like that. And when you have that done, we're going to get a ruler back out again. And we're going to go. Turn that off. Um, we're going to uh, do the same as we did before we're going to, with our marquee tool. We're going to click and drag over our C4Ds and then press and hold Control and C and then V. And I'm going to get rid of the ruler again. And now this time we're going to grab this side and drag it across till it, till it sticks to the corner. I see everything looks kind of symmetrical. Um, now we're going to try and add some um, stuff um, really small, uh, lightly on the front just to give some foreground. And I'm going to use this one. So we go back to the one, one of the C4Ds that you, you hid the first time. And we're going to drag this to the top. Looks okay there. I'm going to erase the bits on the left. Now again, with your, with your ruler, you want to bring out the guide, and then we're going to highlight the what the bit in the foreground we just made, and then press Control C and V, and there's that there, and just flip it across so it looks similar to the last one, put it there, and then click OK, just like that, see, um, now we're going to add in some bubbles, um, just place in your bubbles and set them to linear dodge, And you can duplicate it and just keep placing them as many times as you want until you're happy enough for it to uh, come. Looks okay there. Um, now make sure you erase everyone on the. Uh, well you're only working on one side. You, you can forget about the other side because you want to flip this again. Now. So we'll highlight all our uh, bubble layers, but you can press and hold Shift, click on the bottom one, and while the Shift's pressed down, you can click on the top one and select them all. And then we go right click them and merge layers, and it'll go back like this here. It'll merge them all into one, and we set this to linear dodge, and let's go like that there. Um, now we're going to erase everything on the other side, so so we don't want all that. Uh, now like we did before, and I'll just get my, my ruler back out, uh, my guide, and we make our guide, bring it back out our guide, and we highlight all that, the bubble layer, and we press and hold control, and press C, and then press V, the duplicator, and we set this back to the new dodge. And Okay, I'll try, I'll try, click on transfer controls and we'll drag it across like that see everyone's symmetrical um, now we're going to uh, add a bit of light so we make a new layer and make it black and set it to linear dodge and we grab our brush tool um, we'll choose a really bright yellow brush and bit too big, lower our size down, it's going to be a soft brush as well, and just put in your light source, there, sorry, uh, now we're going to add some shadows, so we get a black brush now, you can use the same size, and just lightly around the outsides like that, Now 
I'm actually washing out the colours down my um, bubbles, so I want them to be bright, so I'm going to bring them above the shadow layer. Like that. When we make another shower, shadow layer down, if you think it's not dark enough, in the background, underneath, like that. Looks alright there. Um, now I'm going to add some gradient maps. So the first gradient map um, I'm going to use is a black to white one, and I set it to luminosity and the opacity to 50%. And again with a gradient map, and this time we're going to choose like a dark, really dark blue. Um, it's 0303B, and the top one I will use like a bright yellow. Like that. That one is F2 double F98. And we click OK. And we lower the opacity of this one down to about 26. And now above our um, bubble layers, we are making a new uh, gradient map as well. And this time we're going to choose like a uh, magenta orange and set this to overlay. At 10%. And another gradient map now. And this time we will choose um, like a really dark red. It's 150101. I click OK. And on the top we will choose a really bright blue. No, cyan. Yeah. It's CBF9FF. Capacity of this to about 20. And uh, now I'm just going to add in a, a color lockup layer and I'm going to choose drop blues. I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, what this is done, I'm going to make a new layer and apply the image. Now, to apply an image, you can either use the command by pressing, hold, pressing and holding shift, control, alt, and E, or you can just go image and then apply image. On a new layer and then it'll merge them all into one and i'm going to add a little bit of texture on this one so i'm going to go into the filter gallery so we go filter filter gallery and i am going to choose paint tubs and click ok and sorry i'll do that again show you what settings at um paint tubs and brush size at one and the sharpness at one and i'm just going to lower the opacity of it a little bit it's about 25 <clears throat> now make a new layer again, we play it again and go into filter gallery and this time we are going to choose spatter with a radius of 2 and a smoothness of 10 and we click OK now on this one here we're going to start masking off bits and we are going to mask our render so I'm going to choose a flow of about 50 just to, so it's not too hard and get a soft brush and start a soft brush and just start brushing back out just brush out bits that you think doesn't look okay When you have that done, we're going to add a color, uh, another color lookup layer, and this one's going to be foggy night. And I'm going to decrease the opacity of this down. Just about 30. And now we're going to add a curves layer. And I'm just going to bring down my low tones a little bit and bring up my mid tones. Just a tad. Now we're going to add a, what was that, a black to white. And we're going to increase the reds a bit, you can see the bring out them bubbles. That's okay there. So my reds are at 211, my yellows are 226 or 126 sorry and 
the greens at 81 and the science at 73 and the blues at 20 and we'll leave it at that and we'll just lower the opacity number now a little bit it's about 40 percent nearly finished so we make a new layer now and we go filter we'll apply the image and then we go filter and we go blur and then we go gauge and blur and we leave the radius at 0.5 and click OK. And then we mask off our foreground. And dim lights. What dim lights are. And we make a new layer now and apply it again and then we go sharpen. Filter. Then sharpen. And click edit. And we fade the sharpen down a little bit. It's about 30. Well, that's the end of the video, guys. Um, that's the outcome there. I just added a little bit of text, and um, yeah, it's pretty easy to do. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions of uh, anything I might have done that you didn't quite understand, do drop me a mail, and I'll reply to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, guys, hit that subscribe button to see my upcoming videos in the future. All right, bye bye. Thanks for watching.